Hi everyone and happy World Peatlands Day. So my name is Angharad Ward and I am the conservation officer for a charity called ACT, which stands for the Argyll and Isles Coast and Countryside Trust. So we are one of the Scottish partners for the CAN project, which is a European Union Interreg 5A program governed by the SEUPB. So I am on a site called Duick Moss here on the uh, Isle of Isla on the west coast of Scotland. So it is designated for its blanket bog habitat among many other things. So blanket bog is a type of peatland that uh, has a thick layer of peat that forms a blanket basically over the bog, hence its name. So as part of the CAM project, what we've been doing out on Duick Moss is uh, tackling an infestation of rhododendron ponticum. So rhododendron is an invasive non-native species that we really just don't want to be seeing out on peatland habitats. Uh, it dries out the surrounding uh, vegetation and outcompetes the, uh, the native plants that we should be seeing out on peatlands like blanket bog. So we need those really wet conditions to help form peat and the rhododendron just dries this up and is a really bad thing to be having out, out on the peatland. So I'm going to give you a little tour of what we've been doing, a little bit about the site, uh, some of the plants and species you can see here and just a little bit more about the CAM project. So first off here we have a little patch of rhododendron that's growing just out on the edge of the bog. So this rhododendron got here from that woodland just up there. So the woodland had a lot of rhododendron in it that was acting as a seed source and the seeds were blowing out onto the bog and you can see a few seeds have settled here, germinated and are now growing up into the plant. How we've been treating the rhododendron then is a combination of a few different methods. So in the woodland where the rhododendron was much taller, much bigger, very thick, dense patches, we have been cutting it down. Our contractors have gone in, chainsaws mainly, and had to uh, chop them all down close to the ground and then treat the stumps with a herbicide to stop any regrowth. Out here on the blanket bog is a little bit different because most of the rhododendron is quite small patches here. So these will be sprayed then with herbicide instead and uh, hopefully tackle it that way. Any bigger bushes will also be cut down and their stumps treated. N rhododendron is a notoriously hard thing to uh, control. So we are in our third year now of treatment and there is still rhododendron on the site, but it is looking much better than it was. And over here, I'm just going to swing round and you can see what a treated bush of rhododendron looks like. So you can see the dead leaves below it and the bare branches. So although it may look not very nice, uh, this is actually a really great thing to see because before this would have been full of leaves, potentially flowering and spreading seeds further out onto the site. So as you can see, we are really quite close to the woodland still, just on the edge of the blanket bog. So here is one of our treated rhododendron bushes and as I pan around you can see there's quite a few kind of dead rhododendron bushes which is great to see but you can also imagine just how bad it was out here. So this rhododendron here was potentially flowering, spreading seeds further and further out onto the bog and before we knew it the whole place probably would have been covered. So it's really great that we've been able to tackle this as part of the CAN project. And I don't know if you can hear the uh, skylark singing in the background. It's actually such a lovely day. It's really great to hear. So we are entering, as I said before, into our third year of treatment. So hopefully we can pick off some of the smaller bushes that were uh, missed the first time or you know have grown a bit bigger and we can tackle a bit better now and uh, just go around and treat any regrowth as well. So hopefully we can leave this site in a much better condition than it was before. Here we have a, another dead rhododendron bush and uh, you can see all the, the dead leaves around the bottom there. But I just wanted to take a little look at some sphagnum that we have close by. So the rhododendron outcompetes the sphagnum and also dries out the conditions around it and the habitat. So these sphagnum mosses need it to be very wet to form and uh, they're amazing. They can hold up to uh, 20 times their own weight in water 
and they're essential for forming peat on these peatlands. So you can see here the lovely rich vibrant colours but as these plants break down and die and decompose they're not able to decompose fully in the wet conditions so they start to stack up and build up this layer of peat or this uh, layer of organic material and so this is a huge store of carbon and is very important to protect in our uh, battle against climate change. As peat is oxidized it releases this carbon into the atmosphere so we want to be keeping a nice layer of sphagnum moss across the blanket bog you know nice and wet to stop this uh, carbon being released as the peat dries out. Here we have a nice bog pool which also contains another type of sphagnum moss. There's over 30 species of sphagnum moss in the UK. So this one is quite a wet loving one as you can see it's right out into this bog pool. What else we have in this bog pool though is a plant called bog bean. Oh, I don't know if you can see that green hair streak butterfly which is also enjoying the bog bean flower. So as you can tell Flowers are important for uh, pollinators and butterflies, such as this green hair streak. I wonder how close I can get. This is actually so lovely. This is a butterfly species that comes out in uh, May and June, early summertime. So here it's loving this bog bean flower. But another species that loves the bog bean is a, uh, a goose called the Greenland white-fronted goose. So. Isla is quite renowned for its geese population in the winter and uh, these Greenland white-fronted geese are uh, a protected species and the site is designated for the protection but they love these bog bean in the winter. They'll eat the stolons all night. They come here in, uh, in their hundreds and will be out across the blanket bog eating away throughout the night and day. So yes, we'll just take another little look at this green hair streak butterfly. Lovely. Now I've just moved over to the other edge of this bog pool and here we have a hare's tail cotton grass. So on Isla we call this uh, bog cotton as you can imagine why and you can see it's got this one stem and one little pom-pom on the top hence the name hare's tail cotton grass. So these are found in wet conditions out on the blanket bog as well and uh, is very important for another butterfly called the large heath. So they need this plant for uh, their caterpillars, so that's their uh, food plant. And uh, yeah, it's really great to see out here and hopefully later on in the summer we should be seeing some large heath butterflies. So they're a UK uh, priority species and are protected. What else do we have around here? So we also have a bit of bog myrtle growing here, which I just love the smell of. It smells amazing. And fun fact is uh, put in some of the gin that is produced on the island here as well. So another plant we have out here on the blanket bog. I'm just on the edge of the bog pool. And you can see here we have some round leaved sundew. Hopefully you can see the little glistening droplets on the end here of these little stems. Just there. So this is a carnivorous plant, you know, quite a similar idea to your, your Venus flytrap. And so these glistening little uh, droplets on the end there are uh, very sticky. So, plant, so insects will come and land on this and the plant will basically gobble them up and they'll get stuck on there and eat them. So they're a lovely, very interesting uh, plant out here and then again you can see there's some lovely rich sphagnum mosses around it as well. So you're very lucky today. You can just see these birds circling around. This is a pair of golden eagles. So they're just flying over the site. Isla has quite a few pairs of golden eagles, but it's lovely to see them out on the bog. Oh, they've just landed in the trees over there. Okay, so I've gone a bit further out into the blanket bog here on Dirk Moss. 
you can see all the Hare's Tail cotton grass, it's like a sea out there. And uh, it's quite a big site, it's over 550 hectares, and there's the ocean in the background. But apart from tackling rhododendron, we also do a lot of surveying and monitoring out here. One of which is measuring how deep the peat is. So here we have uh, my newest toy that I'm very excited about, which is a peat depth measure or a peat probe. So it's made up of about one meter long sections that you can uh, twist together and join. As you can see just there, with a nice big handle on the top. So you join them together and push them down into the ground. And once I'm not able to push it any farther, once it hits rock at the bottom of the peat, I'll put a little mark just where it meets the ground there and then pull it all back out again and measure how deep it is. So I've already put this uh, peat probe in so I'll pull it out and we'll see how deep the peat is right here on this spot. Okay, I've taken the peat probe out, and as you can see, it was quite a long way in. So we'll walk up and see just how deep the peat is here. So there is five meters. So about 558 centimeters, over five and a half meters. That's pretty deep. Peat takes an extremely long time to form. About one millimetre grows in one year for a bog that is in good condition. So for this section, which is over five and a half metres long, that would take over five and a half thousand years to form. As well as doing peat depth surveys, we also do a lot of bird monitoring on Duich Moss. So the Skylarks are all uh, singing very happily around me today. They're enjoying the sunshine. But we also have other birds such as hen harrier, curlew and red-throated diver using the site. So I hope you've enjoyed a little sneak peek around Duoch Moss today and uh, enjoyed seeing all the uh, different plants and things that we do here. Please get in touch if you have any questions about the site or the CAN project or peatlands in general. We'd be happy to answer them. And uh, yeah, happy world peatlands everyone!